hello, welcome to my grandpa's train. Today on my workbench I have two American Flyer GP7 diesel locomotives. Now the one on the left you have seen before, that is the one that has the destroyed melted shell, but I was able to mechanically restore that locomotive underneath. It runs fantastic. So let me pull the shell off. It's so warped that it squeezes the reverser and it won't operate. As you can see, damaged on this end, damaged on this end. Now you can also see the 370 right next to it. This is the one I just recently picked up a few weeks ago and um, was covered in a layer of grease. Now I already cleaned off the shell and it turned out pretty good, um, but I didn't do anything to the, elect um, the mechanicals of it. I didn't clean the frame other than <clears throat> removing the screws to get the shell off. As you can see, the motor and reverser and frame are still quite disgusting, but should be able to be revived. Now you might be wondering, what am I going to do with this shell? I'll show you. There we go. So now that locomotive is complete. You might think that is kind of lame. I thought I was going to be uh, chopping up and modifying this shell to replacing all the damaged portions with the um, with a new uh, sheet metal or something like that. But I ended up just getting a replacement shell off eBay. And the reason is I just didn't have enough time to work on the other shell. And this is a perfectly good solution for this locomotive. The other thing that I'm going to do with this locomotive that I'm replaced with the 371 shell is that I'm going to take the link bar off of this and then install it onto this locomotive. So the 370 on the right will become more or less all original. I think the all, I'm not sure all of the 370s had the red weight inside, but this one doesn't have it. And the 370 on the left has the red weight over the motor. So that one should have a little more pulling power. And I'm going to replace these link bars with knuckle coupler kits available from port lines. So that is how I'm going to repair this end of it by taking this end and putting it here. Uh, not sure that that's going to make it pull any better, but we'll see. I'll, I will link the video I did on this one right up in the corner, or you can also look in the description. Just want to show you a few things on this. Um, wiring is already a disaster. So I wasn't going to show you the re restoration, but I do want to show you um, some unusual things that were done to this. A lot of the screws were replaced, um, including one of the screws for this was a bolt. And the screw holding in the reverse mechanism was this uh, wood screw. So that's a potential cause of damage. Also, these two fingers on the top are, um, I'm not sure if that's a piece of solder to reinforce those. And then one up on the bottom there. There we go. You can see it is completely mangled. So this might be getting um, possibly new fingerboards installed. We'll see how that goes. Uh, the wiring is all boogered up here as well under for the motor. There's one of the wires for the coil. Yeah, this is a mess. All right, I'll let you know when I've got more news. Okay, I often forget this, but I wanted to show you a before and after of this. Um, you can see where all the dirt and grime is. This is, I don't think it's rusted, but it's its borderline turning moldy. So uh, I'm going to take this over to the sink, degrease it all real good. Nice layer of fuzz on this truck. Um, not actually a ton of excess grease on this truck. If anything, it's under greased. There's a little bit in there. Um, but I think most of this, the problems on this, are going to be electrical. So like the commutator needs to be cleaned. Just need to repair the, uh, <clears throat> the windings on the um, armature if they're bad. And then um, generally clean this up and tighten everything. And then, of course, I have to tackle this. So next time you'll see this will be cleaned up and mostly back together. I'm back on the bench with my GP7. As you can see, it's over there. Um, 
I had to order some parts, I decided that the best option to repair this was to order um, replacement fingerboards for the reverse unit. Um, and so while I was waiting, I did some work on some uh, rolling stock. This is the uh, 633 B&O box car that came with this locomotive. And uh, I just got it scrubbed up all last night and I think it cleaned up very nicely. But I'm gonna set this aside so I can fix finish the GP7. All right, I'm gonna fire up my solder and iron and then undo a little unboxing here. So while I was waiting for my parts to arrive, I did a little bit of uh, temporary wiring. I got the motor all cleaned up and repaired and greased. The motor actually on this runs really, really well. I'm surprised uh, how well it actually runs. Um, so I just took the wiring harness and wired it up in series so I could uh, run this in forward only mode and it runs really good. Actually, this runs better than my other GP7. So I'm pretty happy with how this is turning out so far. So if I can just get the reverser repaired and put back together, this thing should be cruising around the layout in no time. All right, let's do a little bit of unsoldering here. All right, let's open up this package and see what came in the mail. Should be a 10 pack of the reversers. Um, reverse your fingers. For being a partial envelope, this is really, really well taped together. <laughs> okay. Let's see what we got. A thank you card with some helpful tips. Got a business card and uh, yeah, very nice. All right, so I'm going to proceed to install these and I'll give you some news when it's ready to go. All right, I have it hooked up with the new fingers on the reverser and I have power hooked up to the uh, points here. So let's uh, see if this thing goes. And it runs. Well, it's time to test out these two GP7 locomotives. The new to me 370 and my uh, cobbled 370 and a half with the 371 shell. The 370 on the left has a date stamp of 1951 underneath the shell. And I believe the other one doesn't have a date stamp. So both of these locomotives are mechanically restored and um, neither are cosmetically restored and by that I mean the stickers are worn off there's paint chips and scratches all over the place and um, the link bars there's a uh, problem with the link bars the 370 on the left only came with the link bar on the front and the back was completely missing you can see it's still not there my plan was originally to take the link bar off the 370 and a half on the right and uh, install it onto the 370 on the left to make a complete locomotive in original condition. Um, the 370 is still missing a lot of screws. I'm going to see if I can find a few correct screws for it because um, wood screws are not the right kind of screws to use. And um, so the 371. I actually managed to break the link bar off of it. So that won't be pulling any cars today, but both of these do run. They run very well, very smoothly, very quiet. And uh, I'm gonna demonstrate that here in a second. So the 370 and a half, which is the one on the right, will become probably converted to link couplers in the future. Not sure when I'm gonna get to that. All right, let's run these and see what happens. Before I operate these locomotives, I just wanna show you the difference in weight. Um, I'll show you the weight of the 370. So here it is on the scale. One pound, 12 ounces. And let me go grab the other one with the weight attached. This one is noticeably heavier. Two pounds, five and a half ounces. Most of that weight is centered over the motorized truck in both of these. Um, the weight is in the front. So almost a full pound heavier.
Okay, so I have a set of cars hooked up. Today I'm running the Chicago Northwestern 42597 flat car, followed by the 633 Baltimore and Ohio box car, the 632 hopper car with a, I think this is an American Models coal load in it, and before it behind that is a B&O gondola that is, I believe, homemade, and finally at the end we have a 638 caboose. Now the only one that would have originally come with this uh, locomotive in 1951 is the Baltimore and Ohio boxcar followed by a 715 unloading car and a 630 caboose. Alright let's operate this. Now that is one nice running diesel locomotive. I don't think I've had any other diesel locomotive that I've had in my collection run quite this smooth. And it runs just as well forwards and reverse. Well that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, why don't you subscribe to my channel to see more restorations like this. And subscribing helps me out so I can do this more often in the future. Finding old greasy locomotives and bringing them back to life. I really enjoy doing that. Also, please like the video and leave a comment. Until next time, whatever project that may be, thanks for watching.